Imagine that you have not one, but two date columns in your sales data. One is for sales date, the other one is for delivery date. So let me ask you a few questions. Tell me how are you gonna solve for it? How much did you sell in the month of January? That's easy and you'll be able to solve it. But here's another one. How much sales was delivered in the month of January? Not sold, but delivered. Okay, here's another one. How much of what you sold in the month of January was also delivered in the month of January? That's a tricky one. All right, here's another one. The sales that were made in the month of January, how were they delivered in the following months, no matter how many months there are? Now, these kind of questions are tricky, obviously, but they can be translated to any kind of data. Sales data, where you have multiple dates, logistics data, where you have multiple dates, supply chain inventory data, where you have multiple dates to work with, or even HR data, when you have multiple dates to work with, maybe against recruitment, when the recruiter is moving the candidates across multiple stages, and every single uh, stage has a date against that. In this video, I'm not only going to teach you how do you solve for these tricky DAX questions that involve working with multiple dates, but I'm also going to teach you some nice validation tricks to write DAX queries that validate your results. You'll not only learn about how to write good DAX, but you'll also learn about some very nice modeling tricks that in turn makes your DAX smaller and smarter. You can obviously download the files that are there that I'm going to use and use them in your own scenarios. Well, if you're ready, let's start. All right, fellas, let's just start taking a look at the data model and of course, answering level one question. All right, I'm gonna talk about that. So take a look at the model first. We have the calendar table. We have the products table as two dimension tables and we have the sales pretty standard data model. Nothing funny going on right here. On the visual side, I've made a very simple visual, a slicer to slice the year. And then we have year here, week here, and what's my sales. Now, obviously, if you take a look at the number, a $400,000 of sales was sold in week one in 2019. Don't bother about the comma separation here. This is the way Indian comma separation works. Nevertheless, if I want to know how much sales was delivered in week one of 2019, then how do I do that? Let's just kind of take a step back and think about it that how are you going to do that in Excel? If you were working with Excel, then we will translate that logic in Power BI and start solving this problem. In Excel, I've opened up the data. And if I were to find out that how much sales was made, not how much was delivered, sales was made in week one, using this particular date column, I'm going to create another column on the far right. And that is going to give me week, whatever week one, week two, whatever that is. And then I'm going to apply filters. Hey, I'll keep the 2017 filter, keep the week filter. And then I will then multiply quantity into price for only week one of 2019 to 019. And then I will get my sales done in that period. Similarly, if I have to find out that how much was delivery done in week one 2019, then my filter should not be on the sales date, which is this order date, sales date, but it should rather be on this particular column called the delivery date. The filter is going to be exactly the same, like apply week one filter, 2019 filter, get the data. And once you have the data filtered to those two values, which is 2019 and week one, you will then do quantity into price and then you will have your numbers ready. Now, if you take a look at my sales measure in my Power BI report, the sales calculation in my Power BI report is already doing that unit price into the quantity calculation for every single row of the sales table. So this part of the logic is clear. But the only problem is at the moment, the filter, which is week one filter and 2019 filter is applied on the order date and not the delivery date. So if I actually go ahead to this particular model view right now, and I take a look at the date column right now, please note that the two columns which are in question in the visualization are coming from here, from the week here. And then there is another one called the year right here. So these are the two columns which are there in the visual. These are filtering the date. And then the date is kicking off from this particular table. And then you're applying the filter to the sales date right here and not the delivery date. And if these two filters year and the week were to come and filter my delivery date, I am going to get to see the right result. Now, what's the thing here? Should we just go ahead and modify this particular relationship that is currently there to cancel it from the sales date and then link it to the delivery date? That means this should be the active relationship. The answer is no, we are going to build an inactive relationship that we are going to use it only for delivery date calculations. Let me show you how. So I'm going to take the delivery date from here and I'm going to go ahead and link that with my date column right here. And it says, hey, do you want to link the delivery date with the date column? Yes, I want to do that. And this I can't make this relationship active because there can only be one relationship active. It's a one to many relationship. That's fine. I'm going to click on OK. And you can see that this dotted line appears right here. And this is an inactive relationship. That means right now not in use. Now I'm going to go ahead and write a measure called sales delivered for which the DAX looks something like this, which is where I will call the inactive relationship and apply the filter to the delivery date column instead, which I saw that in Excel. So now how do I do that? I'm just going to say, hey, calculate. I am still trying to calculate the total sales calculation 
calculation, which I have seen, which is absolutely fine and I'm good with that. But the relationship is not going to be the active relationship, but instead going to be the inactive relationship. So use relationship is the function that I'm going to use. And the use relationship will use the relationship that I have created, which is the inactive sales and the delivery date. Now note that when you're writing this particular DAX, it is necessary that the inactive relationship exists in the model. Otherwise, this DAX is going to give you an error. Now, I'm going to take this measure and put that in my visual. And I can see that if $400,000 of sales was done, but $524,000 of sales was delivered. Now, you might ask me, how is that possible? I just sold $400,000 and how could I deliver $524,000? Because this delivered sales might also contain the sales of the last year December's value. And therefore, this number is a higher number. Anyways, let's proceed to level two questions. When you show this visual to your boss, out of curiosity, your boss might ask you this next follow up question, which is that if the total sales in the month was approximately $400,000, how much of what you sold in that week, which is week one was also delivered in week one of 2019. That means what part of this sales that was made in week one was also delivered in the same week. That's the question that I would want to know. Now, how are we going to solve it? Let's just go step back and try to solve this logically in Excel. If you were only having these raw tools of filters in Excel, how are you then going to solve it? And then we will translate that logic into Power BI. When you go back to Excel, the two logical filters that you will apply on the data are obviously, hey, why don't I pick up week one? You will obviously use this date column to create a week and a year column. And on that week and a year column, you're going to apply a filter, which is going to be the week one filter and the 2019 filter. If these two filters are applied, what you're going to get is nothing but the sales made and of which the number should tally $400,000. Then you're going to go ahead and work with this particular column, the delivery date column. Using this column, you'll again create those two columns week and the year using this particular column and then apply the same two filters, which is give me week one and give me the year of 2019. Having these two filters applied, whatever number shows up in terms of quantity into price, that is the number that was sold in week one and also delivered in week one based on the two filters. Now we'd have to do something very similar in DAX, but let's just take a look at how are we going to do that in DAX. All right, I'm going to create a measure called sold and delivered and for which I will start writing the calculation. Logic of the calculation is pretty straightforward. Please take a look at the year and the week and this year and the week is for the sales week year and the week. This year and the sales week should be same as the year and the sales week for the delivery date as well. That's it. And using these two filters, well, whatever data you get, you do your total sales calculation. Simple as that. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write calculate and I'm going to say, hey, I'm still trying to calculate my sales, but the two filters that I would like to apply are the following. So I'm going to say, hey, why don't you find the week number of of the sales date and the week number should start with Monday and that's what I'm writing the two for and this week number when concatenated with the year of again the sales date when you concatenate these two the result of these two should be equal to the week number of the delivery date and then again this starts on Monday and when this is concatenated with the year of the delivery date and these two should be equal so and that's my very simple measure all that I'm doing is take a look at week number and the year when concatenated and the week number and the year when concatenated they should be the same. And if they are the same, they were sold and delivered on the same week. I'm going to commit on this. Once I drag the measure in the visualization, I get this particular number 22,299. How do we even know that this particular number is correct? Now you can run the same simulation in Excel, apply the filters, filter the data and take a look at the results. But why don't we take a little intimation from the questions that we are solving and try to write a query instead so that you can also learn how to write DAX queries and try to validate the result. These are the exact techniques that I talk about in my DAX course. You not only learn how to obviously frame the solutions to the problems that I'm discussing in the course, but more importantly, I pay a lot of attention on explaining the logic as to why a thing is working and why is it not working and how do you actually debug your own problems. This is going to boost your confidence tremendously while you're trying to build your own solutions and you'll be able to confidently build your solutions. In the last few weeks, I have completely revamped my DAX course and started from scratch teaching you the fundamentals, adding in a lot of content depth to the course. The new one is out now. I'll leave a link for you to join the course and you'll find it tremendously beneficial. Let's just go back to the video. All right, now moving on to validation. How do you actually validate it? So what I'm going to do is all of the work that I asked you to do in Excel, like creating columns and applying filters and all of all of that, we are going to do that in the house of Power BI without actually cluttering our data model. So I could have actually gone ahead and in my sales table and made the columns, which is the week and the year columns from the date here and the delivery date here. And I could have applied the filters carried the data to Excel and done all of that work. But let's just do that in the query view. So I'm just going to hop over to
to the query view right here, which is where I can write queries and I'm going to start to write the query. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to define a few columns. So I'll just use the define keyword. And then after that, I'll use the column keyword to define a column to a table. So you write the define keyword, then what do you want to define? I want to define a column. Now, in order for us to define the column, I have to write the name of the table first, then write the name of the column. This is mandatory. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm trying to make a temporary column, not literally like a physical column, or like a temporary column in the sales table. And the column is going to be called as the sales week here. I'm going to close the square bracket. This makes the column and I'm just going to go ahead and perhaps just write the number one and just see if that is working or not. So I'm just going to say, hey, why don't you just evaluate my sales table? So now the sales table is going to show up this column with a pseudo value one. Let's just see if that appears or not. It just takes a second and we have this pseudo column one, although this is not the real column added to the data model. This is just for the query purposes at the moment. Now I can just modify this value and write something else. The very first thing that I want to write here is nothing but what is the week number if the week were to start on Monday. And if I now click on run, sure enough, it actually gives me my week number that week 29, week 37, so on and so forth. That's nice. I then want to concatenate that week with a little dash sign and the year of that. I'll just again click on run. And this is going to give me that if the week were concatenated with the year, this is how the results look like. Now I have both of them calculated for the sales date. Similarly, I'm going to define one more column and do that once again for the delivery date for which I'm going to go ahead and write the column keyword once again. You can see that there are a lot of underlines right here. The column keyword syntactically somehow is not supported at the moment, but kind of works. So I'm defining a column and the column is going to be called as delivery year, a week year. And we are doing another column, which is where I'm trying to find the week number, which is starting on Monday for the delivery date. And again, I'm trying to find the year for the delivery date concatenated with a little dash in between. And again, evaluate my sales, click on run. We get another column right here. And that column is going to be this particular column. Nice. Now these columns aren't physically created. Now it's the time to apply filters onto these columns, which is let's say week one, because what I wanted to do validate was that is this particular number correct? If this is correct, most likely the week two is also going to be correct. So what I want to see literally is that with all my calculations and filters applied, do I get this number or not? All right. Instead of evaluating the sales table raw, I would now like to apply filters on the sales tables. And my filter looks something like this. So I'm just saying that, hey, why don't you calculate the sales table with two filters, which is where the new column that I have made, which is the sales week year, which is this particular column, apply the week one and 2019 filter and on the delivery week year, apply one and 2019 as well. So that's my filter. I'm going to click on run. The filter is applied and at both the places, I am just left with this particular data. Now, what I want to do is technically, I want to do quantity into the unit price and find out that if actually this gives me that number or not. Now you can take this data to Excel, do the sum product of this particular column in this particular column, and you're going to get this, but, but we will continue working in the query view and get to that answer that we spoke about. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, here is my table. I want you to step inside every single row of this particular table, which is right here. And in this particular table, what I want to do is quantity into the unit price. So I'm going to say, hey, just pick up the sales quantity and multiply that with the sales unit price. I'm going to close the bracket. Now, the only problem with the SUMX calculation is that the SUMX function is going to translate this entire table into a single number and you can't evaluate a single number in a table. So I got to wrap this around in the curly brackets, making it appear like a pseudo table, although it's not a table. So I'm just going to say, hey, this whatever number that you get off of the single calculation, please convert that into a thing. And this actually gave me an error. Let's just go find out what the error is. All right, the formula kind of works here. I just formatted the formula just a bit. There was a slight error in the quantity spelling here. I fixed that as well. And this all seems to work. And now I can see the very number that I was trying to fetch, which is 22,299 almost. And we have that number right here. Let's just move on to level three question. And this is very, very interesting interesting and you're going to find a lot of uses for this in your kind of work. Take a look. So here I'm saying that, hey, if the total sales was approximately $400,000 and of the $400,000, $22,000 was delivered in the same week, then I want to know that how was this entire $400,000 were delivered in the following weeks? That means this is the delivery of week one and week one that matches here that how much of this was then delivered in week two and then how much of this was delivered in week three. Give me that spillover effect of how the sales was delivered until all of this total actually becomes $400,000. How do we do that kind of thing? Though? The thing is that in order for me to do this, we have to first understand that how are we going to present this visual in the first place? So the way that I'm looking forward to present this is that here in the rows, I am going to have the sales weeks. That means once I am taking a look at the totals right here, the total is going to tell me that how much sales was made. Then if I take a look at the individual numbers in the columns right here, these are going to be delivery.
three weeks, that means of this particular sale, whatever that number is, how much was delivered in week one, and then week two, and then week three, and then week four, so on and so forth. This is going to give me like a waterfall like presentation. The only problem is that at the moment, if I just go ahead and for the quick second, if I just happen to remove the sales delivered, and I just take my week again and put that in the rows here, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I just convert that into a matrix visualization. I put the calendar week in the rows, which is technically filtering my sales order date. I do that. This is my weeks. Now I want to put the weeks once again in the columns and I would not be able to do that. So if I just click on add data and if I go to my calendar table and I add the weeks right here, you're going to see that we would not be able to kind of show the weeks right here because the single column could either be in the rows or it could actually be in the columns. It cannot be at both the places. So how do we solve the problem? To be able to solve this problem, to your surprise, we are going to create a second calendar table. Yes, two calendar tables that is going to allow us to take one date to the sales date and the other date to the delivery date. And that is going to be magical and very, very simple to solve. So take a look. Already got the calendar table here. I'm just going to duplicate this particular table. So I'm just going to call a new table right here. And I'm going to call this particular table. Hey, why don't you make this table as my delivery calendar? And this delivery calendar is going to be whatever the calendar table is. So I'm just going to press enter. I get another table called the delivery calendar, which is technically the duplication of whatever the calendar table is, is what I get right here. Now, the only thing is that before I start to build the relationship, I just have to make sure that the week here, the week number is sorted in the week index because I've made that column. Let's just do that. I'm going to go right here in the delivery calendar, take my week number, which is week right here, W27, 28, all of that needs to be sorted in this particular order. So I'm just going to go ahead, sort by the week index. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to build the relationship. And the relationship that I'm going to build is between the delivery date. Remember that the visual that we were trying to make that we had week one and week two and then week three. These weeks were sales weeks. That means the filter is going to come from here and filter the sales state. That's that. And once we pick up this particular filter and put that in the columns of the matrix week one and then week two and then week three, these filters are not going to filter the sales state. These weeks are going to filter actually the delivery date. So we will take a look at how the delivery was done. Literally that that's it. No change whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and take the delivery date and link it right here. That one to many relationship. This is going to be an active relationship because this is the only relationship that exists. Pretty good. I'm going to come back to the visual right here. I made an empty visual, which is where I've applied a slicer 2019 and the month of January so that I get to see less number of weeks. And now I'm going to go ahead and start to dump my week column. So from the calendar table, I'm going to dump the week column in the rows right here. So let's just see, do we have the week in the rows? Yes, we have in the columns. I'm going to dump my delivery calendar and the week right here. And these are my weeks and these are my weeks. Nice. Now we will write the simplistic calculation, not right, but actually use the calculation that we have already made. So if I just go ahead and take my total sales calculation, dump it right here, we have the answer ready. Because if you think about it, the weeks right here, when they apply the filter from the second table to the sales table, what you are applying the filter on is the delivery date. And this is how the items were delivered. And if you total them all, all of these will accumulate to $400,000. And in the next week, whatever you sold $406,000, this particular entire sales of week two was delivered like this in the following weeks. This actually brings a very nice waterfall kind of a layout, which is where you can trace the delivery or any kind of movement of any object inventory people across different time periods. And that is a very nifty way of doing that using a modeling approach rather than actually hitting it with tax. Now, obviously you can take this particular calculation and make it nuanced, more interesting. And I talk about a lot of that in my DAX course that how do you enhance this calculation? also make it more visually appealing. In case you're interested, the link is down in the bottom of the video. Please do join the course and you will benefit a lot. Now, moving on to level four, which is where I want to talk about the most important DAX functions that you want to learn first that is going to make learning DAX probably enjoyable and a lot easier as well. I'll see you in that video. Cheers.